It is a well-known fact that Unreal Engine 4's renderer is a literal beast, which is one of the many reasons a lot of artists choose to use it. And while everything looks super good out of the box, sometimes one may wish to increase the quality of their images. Believe it or not, you can improve it by a ton and quite fast. There are probably various ways of doing that, but in this video we will look over 3 of these methods. Keep in mind 3 things. First, I'm not going to talk about using the post process or anything as basic as that. Secondly, these methods can be used more more or less in games as some may be too performance intensive and you may not be able to use them everywhere. And lastly, using the information in this video alone will not make you a great artist all of a sudden. There are a lot more aspects to keep in mind than the ones I'm going to talk about in this video. If this is your first time here and you want to learn more about Unreal Engine 4 and game development, start now by subscribing so you don't miss anything. With that being said, let's begin the tutorial. First and foremost, let's talk about sharpening your details. This may sound confusing, but bear with me for a second. Time for a bit of backstory. I came across this when I was creating this scene while using some Megascans assets. But I had one problem. I've always noticed how sharp and clear Quixel images are, while mine are rather blurry. So I went and researched a bit about this. Jonathan, a Quixel community manager, said in a post related to the clarity of an image, try out the r.tonemapper.sharpen console command, but to be careful with the amount. So I tried it and I wanted to see what happens if I really crank up the value and went with a crazy 10, which left me with a lot of artifacts which ruined the scene. Saying that, I went on with my research and discovered a post on the Unreal Engine forum made by Halator with a very good post-process material that sharpens the details. To be frank, I wasn't expecting much from it, but the results were, no clickbait, shocking. In fact, I think it looks even better than the built-in command. Here are some images to make a good comparison between the scenes with it on and off. You can see the effect it has mostly on the right rock and on the lower left rocks. This example is a bit exaggerated and I think I might have overdone it, but it's a good way to demonstrate that if you try to sharpen too much, even with this material, you can destroy the looks. I'm going to leave a link to the author's post down in the description of this video. I'm not fully aware of the performance cost this may have, so I suggest not going too crazy with this value if you're planning to use it in a game. Here are the steps you need to take in order to be able to use this material yourself. The only thing that you need to do is to copy the provided code and paste it in the material editor, set the material domain to post process, plug in the nodes and that's it. Then create an instance of the material and assign it in the post process. You can easily tweak the amount of sharpness you want to add in the instance or in the post process using the material slider. There's that with the first method, on to the second one, that is using an HDRI image instead of the default skybox in combination with a well set up skylight for a more natural look. Alright, let's break this one into two parts. Let's first address the problem with the skybox. The default skybox in Unreal Engine 4 is very good until you start noticing how cartoonish it can look and how there are some particular problems with how it looks color wise. If your game or environment can make good use of it, perfect, keep using that to avoid any additional work. But if that's not the case and you want to step up your game a little bit, then you should start using HDRIs. An HDRI is a special image format that can be used in a game engine and other programs to simulate the skybox of a real world. These images are taken from real life with special equipment and wrapped around the inside of a special sphere in the engine using materials. There are some problems with using an HDRI such as the cadre is being slightly bugged and some compression problems but this can be fixed by tweaking values or using a better material. There's not really much else to say about this other than that the performance cost will vary depending on the image resolution and overall quality, but it usually doesn't have a big impact. For free and qualitative HDRIs, you can go over to hdriheaven.com and you'll find a bunch there that might be helpful to you. Now let's see how we can set up a material that works with the HDRI and what sphere to use for it. First, let's take a look at the, at the HDRI. This is it, nothing fancy, just a landscape with a sky. One thing that you need to make sure you do is to go to MIB gen settings and set this to no MIB maps, otherwise it is going to get very blurry. And then if you notice this distortion at the bottom, don't worry about it. It is not going to be there when we finish the material. Close this down, let's go to material and I'm going to call this M underline sky. The first thing that we will have to do is to go to shooting model and set this to on lead. And let's get a constant shift vector and set the blue value to 1. Then we are going to plug this in a rotate about axis. In the rotation angle, we are going to get a constant, which we will turn into a parameter and call this cube map rotation. Okay, by default 0. Pivot point, 
constant with 0 and the position is going to be the world position with the shader offset to be the third third value from our relative world position we plug this in here and let's add this together okay uh, one thing you need to make sure you do is that you select the third one with the including material shader offsets and not the including version okay let's normalize the output and then this is going to be plugged into a texture sample let's convert this into a parameter i'm going to call this cube map and we will have to go ah uh, no this should be fine okay multiply this with a constant a parameter in fact let's call this intensity and the default value is going to be one let's clamp this between zero and one okay let's get a power node from the output with the exponent another parameter called contrast at the default value one we are going to get two more multiplication nodes in the first one we will get another another parameter this one is going to be called brightness with the default value of one and the third one the last multiply node is going to be a constant three vector a parameter in fact called tint then plug this in emissive color and that should be it okay now we will have to plug in the texture an image so let's do that but this is still not working so let's see how we are going to fix that the reason why this isn't working is because we are using the wrong node so let's delete it and instead search for something with cube and if you are going to take a look in this list you can see here texture sample parameter cube this is what we are looking for let's call this cube map okay plug the uh, normalize in the uvs and this one in the multiply now you can see how this looks but this is not what we are looking for we will need to choose the image and plug this in here now we can see how it looks and this is how it should look apply okay close down and let's create an instance and here we can see better how it looks now we can play around with the brightness contrast and rotation and intensity and we can tweak these values to get a better look for example let's say with the contrast 2 this is going to look a little bit dark maybe you can go with something like 1.2 the rotation is self-explanatory which is going to rotate it around Okay, the brightness purely and with the intensity we can choose the general intensity which is not going to exceed 0 or 1 okay let's save and let's close this down let's delete the skybox now we're going to be left with this what we have to do is to go here click on this button to expand this panel and let's go to engine content and we'll have to go to editor shapes no editor meshes there we go and here we will need to look for the editor sky sphere okay now this by default is not too big so what we'll have to do is to go to the scale and set this to 10,000 okay that's 10,000 and that should be fine now let's go back to our blueprints and put in the material the instance and now you can see how this looks maybe 10,000 is a little bit too much yeah that should be fine and here you can see how this looks in the world I'm sure you can see that this part is very blue that is because of the atmosphere and the other effects that i put in here the second part of this point is the skylight this usually goes hand in hand with the skybox in our case the hdri because that drives the brightness emitted by the skylight by having a good setup for both you can get very realistic results last but not least this may sound confusing fake it till you make it all right let me explain this is a common thing that usually happens in outdoor environments that consists of using various elements to reproduce an effect. There are usually two reasons why you'd want to do this. First, because it's easier than directly achieving that effect through already created assets. And secondly, because it's better for the overall performance, therefore you can even use something like this in games. This technique can be very easily used for indoor scenarios as well. All right, theory aside, let's see an actual example, such as clouds. In Quixel's video about rebirth, at 22 minutes and 10 seconds, you can see how they use the plane in combination with the cloud material to fake clouds and fog. 
which you might have been able to achieve by tweaking the exponential height fog, but it would have been insanely hard compared to what they did. Another example is the small rocks and pebbles. In order to save performance, instead of actually placing them with a foliage tool, you can create decals with all the necessary textures, those being albedo, roughness and normal. You can get this for free from the Megascans library using Quixelberry. God bless Epic for doing us such a favor. While this might not seem like a big impact on the performance, you're going to massively save draw calls and vertices from your scenes. And that's everything for today. If you have any other questions regarding this video, let me know down below and I will make sure to answer them. As well, if you know any other methods of improving an environment, make sure to share them down below and as well. Let me know if you found any of these methods in this video interesting or useful. In case you are wondering what I have been doing for the past 5 weeks, well, mostly dealing with school. But right now I'm having a 3 week holiday so expect more tutorials in the upcoming month. Hopefully I will be able to figure out a way to post videos even when I have school. Thanks a lot to everyone for sticking around even after missing so much. If this is your first time here and you want to learn more about Unreal Engine 4 and game development, Start it out by subscribing so you don't miss anything. Big thanks to Aaron Skinner, Andrew Milspog, Badr Al Khartani, Budiman Erzone, Clive75, Dave V. Prasad, Donald Anderson, Drew Mile, Gabriel Martino, Iwan Crayons, Justin Cerilli, Kawisin Nithiro Tanan, Kiwi, Constantine, Lorenzo, Moise Alexander, Queen Shaw, Theoric, and Sim369 for supporting the channel this month. Thanks a lot for watching the video until the very end, and I'll catch you in the next one.